I'm here at Unleashed today talking with Adam Gordon, CEO and co-founder of Candidate ID. Welcome, Adam. Thank you very much for talking to me. Happy to have you. Um, so, Adam, when we look at the candidate journey, how has it changed over the past, let's say, 10, 20 years? So when I started in recruitment in 1999, 20 years ago, candidates could find out a little bit of information about a job opportunity from a small advert that I'd put in the newspaper. Yeah. They then, if they're slightly interested, they had to talk to me in order to find out more information. Today, candidates have got an abundance of information available to them online, so they can find out exactly what it's like to work in a particular organization, and they don't need to talk to recruiters until they've gone through an education phase on their own, in their own time, and we don't want to talk to people that are going to sell us something, such as a new job, until we've done all that self-directed research. So as a result, organizations have to adapt by being able to understand who's where in the pipeline. Otherwise, they're only getting to talk to the people that are ready for a job today. And they really want to talk to people at an earlier stage in their decision making. So what you're talking about is then trying to identify what stage people are in, maybe passive candidates who are not really in any stage at all yet, but still you want to send them some content and then maybe people who are a little bit further in that journey and people who are actually ready to move, right? Exactly. So we, we describe it as people who are cold, warm and hire ready. Um, and I, I, another thing is I, I this can't concept of passive candidates and active candidates, I actually believe everybody is a candidate until they retire. All right. So no matter what your job is, no matter how much you love your job, if Richard Branson or Barack Obama or somebody taps you on the shoulder and says, I'd like you to come and work with me to do this, most people are going to open the message. Most people are going to be intrigued. Yeah. So I think that everybody is persuadable. And what we really want to do is nurture candidates over a, over a period of time that is um, determined by them. So some people are ready for a job today, they're hire ready today. Other people are warm, which means they're engaged with your organization. They're maybe not ready for a conversation about jobs, but they like your content and they want to keep receiving it. Those who are cold, give them useful, relevant content and they become warm. So we're talking about talent pools here, am I right? My definition of a talent pool is really just a list. That's a list of people that you might want to hire in the future. Um, what I think organizations need to be trying to identify is a ta they need to be turning that into a talent pipeline. All right. So a pipeline means you know who's cold, you know who's warm, you know who's hire ready. So if you think about a sales pipeline, you know who's not ready to buy, you know who's going to be buying sometime soon. That's what I think organizations need to be trying to develop with their uh, yeah, talent pipelines. All right. And how can they start doing that? So, great question. In the past, the only way to do that was to pick up the phone to potential candidates, ask them how they're getting on, ask them if they enjoy their job, ask them why they might, you know, what might make them consider making a job move, those kinds of things. Today, because we've got so much access to candidates and we know who everybody is, there's so much transparency in the candidate pipeline, we've got huge numbers of people in front of us and we don't really know who to pick up the phone to and who to talk to. We can't do it with every person. If you've got a talent pool of 300 candidates, it's gonna take you at least three months to actually get to have a conversation with all of them. By which point, the people you talked to three months ago, their circumstances have changed. Yeah. So it's just not a scalable um, way of doing things. That's why today we need technology to do the heavy lifting. We need technology to tell us who's cold, warm and hire ready. And the way that we choose to do it is by measuring each candidate's engagement with an organization's content. All right. So who's opening emails, who's opening text messages, who's opening social media messages, who's watching videos, who's looking at um, infographics, who's looking at blogs and vlogs and you know yeah. other things like that. Who's looking at job descriptions, of course. Okay. So we track and measure each person's interactions with an employer's content. And what that means is if they've got, say, a thousand software engineers based in Paris on their database, 
they can now filter them using our engagement score, which will show the recruiter, here's the 15 people on a strong engagement score and active in the last two weeks. That's the 15 people to prioritize reaching out to. How easy is it for a company to get started with this, with this pipeline system? There's four things that they need. They need content or access to content. That's normally the, the, the ingredient that most organizations think, I don't have that. But actually, when I say to them, look, you've got B2B content, you've got thought leadership, you've got your CEO's interviews with Bloomberg, you've got your internal learning and development content. They, they realize that there's a lot of content they actually have, which hasn't been created with recruitment in mind, but can be adapted for recruitment. All right. And actually, most people are not hire ready today. So they don't care about your employer brand and they don't care about your job descriptions. It's other things that are gonna be useful for their career that they want. So content is the one that probably involves the most thought. Yeah. The second thing is they need a candidate database. Mm -hmm. We find international employers with a million and more candidates sitting stale on an applicant tracking system. That's the database. Start with them, make use of them. If you haven't spoken to them since they applied five years ago, it doesn't matter. Send them something now. This is what we call waking the dead. Right. Distributing content to people to stale data. Yeah. To really try and enliven it. Of course, there's GDPR considerations around that. But to be honest, stale data is a much bigger GDPR risk than sending things to people. Okay. Um, so the second thing is, is the actual data itself, which most organizations are rich with. They're just not doing anything with it. Yeah. The third thing is um, the kind of knowledge of how to put <clears throat> all of this together. And the fourth thing is software that's going to coordinate it. So our product allow, um, includes a candidate database, it includes a content database, and it includes a campaign builder. And the fourth thing it includes is a, is a kind of scoring model. All right. So you can make use of these four things in um, parallel. And the net result is you're able to filter your candidates based on an engagement score. So. And so <clears throat> making use of this technology and building these pipelines to engage with candidates and see who's warm, cold, and higher ready. Um, the end result, because I guess that's what a lot of our uh, viewers are interested in, is that companies then get to hire better candidates, I guess. Yeah, so theoretically, the answer is yes. The, the metrics our customers are telling us quite consistently now is 50% reduction in time to shortlist All by right. month three. So very quickly. Yeah. Um, the second metric is 50% uh, more hires per recruiter by month 13. That's huge. That's yeah. a huge result. Yeah. Yes, they have to spend some time on creating their campaigns, yeah. around two hours per week per pipeline. However, they're, they're massively reducing the amount of time they need to spend on direct sourcing, yeah. um, which is the longest it is, it's a good way of doing recruitment, but it's also a time-consuming way of doing recruitment. So if they can eliminate a lot of the time spent on cold outreach to people because they know who to pick up the phone to, then... That's a huge win. Huge win. Yeah, of course. Okay, final question. What's next? What's next is self-building campaigns. Okay. So as I say, as of today, um, it takes about two hours worth of time per week to bring together some new content, to write email copy, write landing page copy, and put your campaign together for next week. Um, we intend to be able to serve recruiters every week with an email which says, next week's campaign's ready for review. They click on the link, the email copy's written, text message copy's written, social media posts are written, landing page copy's written, and it's brought together three or four pieces of content from the internet that it thinks that candidate pipeline is going to be interested in. So let's say you're nurturing software engineers in Paris. Mm -hmm. It will bring together, okay, here's four web pages or content assets or YouTube videos or whatever that software engineers in Paris have been engaging with over the last week. And it'll serve them as recommendations to the recruiters. So we expect to be able to bring the time to create a campaign down from two hours to maybe 20 minutes. Okay. That's what's next. Fantastic. It's machine learning. It takes yes, us from being an automation. Say, yeah. it takes us from being an automation product to a machine learning product. Yeah. Super interesting. And then I just reminded that reminded me of one uh, 
real last question, which is, what is the value of a recruitment CRM? So I think somebody's probably asked you to ask me Definitely. that question. Definitely. Um, the value, so we, we regularly get told by potential customers, candidate ID is brilliant, but I really feel like I need a recruitment CRM first. And so in order to eliminate that objection, we have extended the functionality within our product to effectively be a recruitment CRM. We're also offering that for free to anybody who wants a recruitment CRM at freerecruitmentcrm.com. And um, the reason for this is because we believe that the value in recruitment CRM is zero pounds, zero euros, zero dollars, zero yen. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't do anything for you much more than a an ATS does for you in terms of just storing it, it stores information. And it only really gives you what you put into it. You might as well use a pad of paper. <laughs> Maybe not quite. Anyway, the value of recruitment CRM is zero. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you for having me.